Well, welcome to the first Make the Future Table Talk. Uh, I'm Lisa Regal. I'm the one that keeps bothering you with the emails and, and telling you about the program. Uh, just to give you a quick snapshot, this is a program funded by the Toyota Foundation, and its intent is to help people who recruit or um, do career counseling with students to help them see the pathways that are available uh, into advanced manufacturing. And so our goal is to provide some recruitment strategies and support so that we can increase the female and underrepresented population that will then take the um, AMT courses at the community colleges and hopefully eventually work their way into um, working for Toyota, maybe someday, or working in a STEM field. So we have created as part of the project nine best practices for recruiting and that document's available on the learning management system. And so these table talks will cover each of the strategies one at a time. And we thought it might be nice for people to just have kind of a casual conversation, a place where um, they could talk about what they're currently doing and ask questions and share some information. So um, that's the purpose of today. And we are going to have a moderator in each of the sessions. And today our moderator is here at Sunal Bhakta and he will be introduced in just a moment. But before he gets started, I wanted to introduce um, Mimi Lufkin. She is the former CEO, but she certainly hasn't retired. <laughs> Nobody lets her retire. So she's probably working as much as she did where she was the acting CEO. But um, she's gonna welcome you and introduce you a little bit to the LMS. And Mimi, you're on mute. Thank you. Sorry about that. Can you all hear me now? Yeah, I see smiling faces. That's always good. Okay. Um, thanks, Lisa, for the opening comments. And um, I did want to let everybody know that if on the materials tab on your control panel on the right hand side of your um, screen, when you logged in to go to meeting, there are a couple of resources there. Well, the nine best practices um, document you can access directly there. Thank you, Kathleen, for posting that up on the materials tab for the training room today. Um, and there's also an evaluation for you to complete at the end of today's session, which I'm sure we'll mention a few times to remind you to do that. Um, I wanted to welcome you all to this project. This has been a great um, resource for us there. Um, our participating community colleges and high schools in each of the colored states here you can see that are engaged in the project. So those of you who are on the call today um, are probably from one of those locations. And we've created a suite of tools and resources um, for educators to access to help them in developing um, materials and, and learning um, processes, best practices and strategies in their classrooms and, um, and also with uh, in recruitment activities for increasing the participation of underrepresented groups in, in STEM. And, um, and I'm going to do a, a quick tour of the LMS to make sure that everybody that's involved today and who watches this in the future um, remind them about the resources that are available to you. One of the things that we did in this project was to do a res uh, research of the literature in addition to a series of focus groups and interviews with um, people who've been successful in recruiting girls and other underrepresented groups into um, advanced manufacturing career pathway programs. And from all of that, um, basically distilled that information into these nine best practices. And today's table talk will be focused on reaching out to middle and elementary schools. Um, we want to remind you that um, we'll be holding a table talk on each of these topics every two weeks. I'll show you the calendar of those activities in a minute um, on the forum on the LMS so you know where you can access it at any time. So I'm going to skip over to the LMS here quickly and remind you about um, NAEP's learning management system. Um, if you're involved in this project, you should have already signed up for this LMS. Um, basically, if you go to nape.courses uh, and log in, uh, you'll be able to access it. If you have yet to complete the um, entry survey and, um, and get your login information, please reach out to any one of us, Kathleen, myself, or Lisa. We'll all put our email addresses in the chat box for you before we end today um, to make sure you know how to reach us. And um, we'll uh, make sure that you get the information. Um, so in the LMS, there are modules and there are forums. And this happens, I'm happened to be on the forum page today. 
And you'll notice that there's a posting that about the nine best practices table talks uh, that got posted earlier and um, just clicked on it. And you, so this is information about today's table talks and you'll see that there is the calendar of activities for all of the rest of the table talks that are calling, coming up. Um, so don't forget on February 4th from noon to one o'clock Eastern time. Oops, I got to fix this. Sorry, I forgot to remove that four to five. It's actually from noon to one. Um, we'll be talking about how to, to use invitations and make it personal for inviting students to, um, to non-traditional programs, especially in advanced manufacturing. And of course, there's also um, the modules that are available. Um, these are all learning modules uh, through this particular project that you can access. Um, all of these are online courses about various strategies. There's one specifically um, designed for um, the nine best practices um, that are available. That's available to you as well. Um, and so I encourage you to go take a look at that and dig into each one of those. Um, I want to particularly highlight this one down here, the Advanced Manufacturing Pathways Resources uh, module. And the best practices guide, you can download the PDF and print it here. We also have these four posters that are in printable format, so you can download these and print them. And a link to our YouTube channel where we've got lots of videos that you can use for recruitment activities as well. So take a look at all of that. Um, and then again, to remind you about today's particular topic, um, the nine best practices modules, um, Let's get to it down here. Um, includes a section in it for each of the strategies. So if um, as you're working on thinking about what we learn in today's um, particular discussion, you can actually get to um, in this inspire section, the very first strategy happens to be about reaching out to middle and elementary school students. And so on that note, I'm going to introduce our facilitator for the day to talk to us about this particular strategy. And I am excited to introduce to you Sanal Bhakta, who's worked in business and technology consulting for 15 years prior to entering the education space. When the opportunity presented itself for him to develop his own program at a career and technical academy in Clark County School District, this is in Nevada, he welcomed the opportunity to fuel his passion of helping others and working with tomorrow's leaders. Currently, he's employed with the Career and Technical Education Department of Clark County School District, the fifth largest school district in the country. And he's doing amazing things around engaging young women and girls in um, STEM-related activities. And he's gonna share lots of things with us today about some of those strategies, and we hope that you'll replicate them. So Sanal, I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right, uh, thank you, Mimi. Just everybody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Everybody sounds good, sound check. All right, great. Well, thank you everyone uh, for giving me the opportunity to kind of share what we've been doing to really connect um, our young female population to different careers. You know, as Mimi mentioned, you know, I, I work in the fifth largest uh, school district in the country. So it's like working for a large corporation. So at any one time, just to give you an idea, like in a, a fifth grade, we have anywhere between 12,000 to 15,000 girls across our county. And uh, to try to ensure each one of those girls are aware of the different opportunities available to them um, is a challenge, but you, you know we, we continue, or I continue to accept the challenge to try to make sure that every single student um, in our school district is aware of all the challenges in front of them, especially girls. Um, we're all aware of non the, those non-traditional careers that girls, uh, uh, for the most part, may not be aware of. So I am going to see if my sharing screen works, if I can figure this out. I'm gonna, see if this keep my fingers crossed if the technology will work da, 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 da. it's like jeopardy i know it's, tr it's trying it's trying so Sanal, trying. when i look at the make presenter list under my um screen i'm not i don't see you on my list but kathleen yeah. can you help us out i i sent you an invite to be presenter you should have gotten a oh so i need to check my email let me Oh, no, it should have come shown up on your, it says you are the presenter. Okay. But you need what do you to go Are you the, still seeing my screen? It says waiting to view Sanal's screen. Okay. 
And at the very top, there should be a screen sharing option. Um, Let's see. If you're not finding it, you may have to up. Oh. Hold on. Lost your um, webcam. Yeah. Okay. I, I tr can you send it again, Kathleen? I don't see it. I'm I'm in a web browser, so I wasn't sure if that. Yeah, that might be. If I should actually difficulty. Might be the issue. So, let me see if I can. Um, I think I have go to meeting. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, about this. But uh, let me see if I can really quickly switch over. I enter the meeting webinar. Let's see how fast I can get this switched over. Here, and I'm going to change the presenter back to Mimi and then back to you again, see if that helps. Okay, there's Mimi's screen. And looks like Sanal had to step off, so. He'll be back. Well, okay. While he's while he's getting his thing organized, let me just give you a, a quick reminder about some stuff on the LMS. Um, so, for each of the topics, for each of the nine strategies, there's a section that basically has an introductory piece about that particular strategy. But the coolest part, I think, about the module piece, especially for this module, um, is there's also then, if you go to the next topic page, a list of resources for you if if you want to try to implement this strategy. So for example, there's a guide that was developed by the Manufacturing Institute called the Voice Guide for Ambassadors to Manufacturing. And it's a classroom visit guide that can prepare you to work with students of all ages, um, includes age appropriate activities for elementary and middle schools. It's a fabulous piece. And basically when you click on that particular link, it takes you directly to the document which looks like my computer's a little slow getting it loaded today because of all the bandwidth we're eating up from the webinar, but there it is. And you can download this and use it as a resource and this will load up on your computer and you'll have access to that. So I encourage you to do that. There's also a couple of other resources. Kathleen, you want to add to that? Well, I just was going to say, I cut you off because I resent Sanal the, the uh, presenter invite. So the folks didn't get to see your last um, screen. Okay. So, hey. Sanal, are you oh. thinking this is going to work? You know, I click the little share button and it just keeps on spinning those three dots. So, I don't know why. If you want to email the slide, we can have um, Kathleen sure. or Amy put it on the screen. Sure. Maybe that's what we'll do. Okay. Okay. All right. While we're getting this set up, um, could we have Elliot and Fanella and Freda, Jessica, Kelly introduce themselves? Just Great to idea. Say where you're from. So, Freda, you want to start? You're muted. Now, can you hear me? Yep. 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 My name is Freda Walker. I live in Northern California. I'm in a very small school district um, that has a high school and a junior high school. And we have about um, like maybe 300 students total. And so it's really important that our elementary and our junior high school work with the high school in relation to career and technical education. Agreed. I love that. Elliot? Hello, uh, Elliot Mork. I'm the Vice President of Partnerships at Project Lead the Way, or PLTW. Uh, we're partnering with Nate to help uh, work on this project, and I think a lot of the high schools um, that are involved are also Project Lead the Way schools. We're uh, kind of working in tandem to make sure that we can have uh, seamless pipelines into technical career fields uh, that are very lucrative for everyone. Um, so we're excited to support the work. Thanks. Vanilla?
Not sure. Anella? I don't know that we can we can't hear you. We'll move on and come back and see. If okay, we can, can you hear that me out. now? Sorry. Oh, yes, there oh, you yeah. are. I had it on mute. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm Fenella Smith. I work at a Toyota in Georgetown, Kentucky, and I am a diversity recruiter. I am a part of the advanced manufacturing um, technician team, and what that means is that I recruit AMT members for our specific plant. I'm also the secretary of Bluegrass Kentucky Fame, which is the umbrella uh, under which the AMT program is a part of in the state of Kentucky. Great. Well, we're glad you could join us. Jessica? Glad to be here. <laughs> we can't hear you, Jessica. Right. <laughs> we'll skip ahead and come back to Jessica. Kelly? Jessica and just chatted to everybody. So if there's a chat there you can read about her role. All right. So Kelly? Is maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe Kelly's having trouble too. Okay. Well. Okay. Um. And uh, so let's let's go ahead and dive in so that uh, we make good use of the time. So sorry about that uh, technical issues or technology issues. So, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if Mimi or Kathleen. Kathleen, I sent you a bunch of other links that I also eventually like to get to. But uh, if uh, this is just a standard presentation that I've used when I've shared with uh, community folks, um, corporate folks, uh, educators, principals, administrators about our uh, girls in tech, girls in STEM program. And I will tell you a couple things. You know, this is something we started three years ago. And this is something that changes each and every year as far as our focus. Um, and, and, and actually, maybe that's not the right word to use. Uh, what we do changes. Our focus is still the same, but what we're really trying to overcome is, 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 is some pretty big hurdles. So if you could go ahead and push to the next slide. Um, it, it's, yeah, and it's going to be, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I always explain to people, you know, how this started and, you know, kind of what my motivation behind it. So if you go to the next slide, um, you know, not only is it part of my job, yeah, you have to click through. There's got some animations, but, okay. um, uh, you know, presentation one-on-one, -on -one, always have a picture of a, a dog or a baby picture of yourself or a kid. So this is my daughter. And uh, that first picture demonstrates, you know, her love for technology, just like my love for technology and STEM uh, that, uh, you know, I would do anything for and, and and I don't want anyone to tell any of our females out there that they can't do something because it's male dominated or, or or that's not meant for them but I have that second picture because as a parent you know I can't tell her that she can have all those M&Ms behind her so she wasn't too happy when she couldn't have those M&Ms but if you scroll to the next slide um, you know uh, and just click through um, whoever's clicking through, but th these are just some numbers about our school district and some of the challenges that we face uh, in in the workforce as far as work uh, women only making up 25 percent of the workforce in computing occupations as a whole. Uh, there's definitely um, some STEM areas related to technology that are much lower than that. So if you continue to keep on going and some of these numbers are based on the audience that I had as far as you know obviously half the population of is female but yet only a small percentage occupy certain uh, whether it's degrees or undergraduates uh, in technology or STEM and, and I use technology and STEM pretty um, interchangeably mainly because in my view um, uh, technology is in every single STEM career and, and I think we could all probably agree on the call technology is, is in every career whether it's advanced manufacturing uh, auto mechanics uh, carpentry woodwork nursing um, anything like that so and it kind of gives you an idea of you know the, the STEM degrees as far especially that first one the the percentage of uh, males versus the females I mean just a huge gap there and uh, the, this was just a few years ago and, and and this has been something that we've known about for many years you know um, I remember when I graduated college uh, in engineering uh, there were two females in my graduating class and I spoke with a senior that graduated from his engineering class uh, here locally uh, uh, a year and a half ago and he said there were five females is in his engineering class so in 20 plus years which i just dated myself you, you <laughs> 
you know, we haven't really come that far going from two females to five females. And I know that's a, that, that's a bad example. It's not apples to apples, but uh, just uh, you, we have a long way to go. So if you can continue to uh, scroll through, we'll kind of get to, you know, you're all aware of the diversity in technology. Just click through, go ahead and click through. This is some information and data from Girl Scouts uh, about STEM uh, a year and a half ago. If you didn't, if you weren't aware of this, Girl Scouts actually issued out STEM badges. Yeah, continue to go through. There's there's gonna be like three or four stats oh, okay. that come up. Yeah, so, um, you know, I love that 87% of girls are interested uh, on in STEM and, and they wanna know how things work. But that last one, you know, 40%, seven percent half the girls would be uncomfortable to be the only girl in the class or if there were only two or three girls and a lot of times especially with with what you're looking at here with advanced manufacturing uh manufacturing heavily male dominated i mean probably even more so than uh technology you know it might be you know 95 percent male dominated so so how do we overcome that or, and overcome these challenges so go ahead and click through so this is a video that um i, I did send the link to kathleen uh, but um, uh, we don't need to play it. But basically, it's uh, Microsoft's "Make What's Next" video, and 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 not to say um, it's uh, we it's sorry. I'm trying to. Re so the video goes through and it asks girls um, to name an inventor, um, and then all the girls name Albert Einstein, Alexander Graham Bell, uh, and and the theme is they're all naming male inventors, and then they go through and ask these girls in elementary, middle school to name a female inventor. And they're all silent. You know, they're all deathly quiet because they don't know. And they talk about, hey, we never talk about it in school. We never talk about female inventors or different things like that. So, and then at the end of the video, it actually flashes through all the different female inventors. You know, Ada Lovelace, Marie Curie, and all that stuff. So, um, you, you, you know, how do we address some of these challenges of getting? Uh, young females interested in things like STEM and advanced manufacturing. So if you click to the next slide, um, is um, and keep on clicking. You know, obviously we need to empower them, um, and and we empower them through knowledge is is what I believe. And go ahead and click to the next slide as well. So and and this. Ex this uh, kind of tells you about our program here, what we did using Perkins funding to really increase uh, or at least provide those opportunities where we expose them to career exploration activities, technology and STEM. Um, a lot of research is behind that. One of the reasons why more girls aren't going into it is one, trying to work with them in the early grades, elementary, middle school, and expose them to those careers. And 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 the key here is if you look at all this, you know, uh, I'm not trying to get them in those classes. I'm not trying to get them to declare those majors. What we really want to do is we want to expose them, make them aware of it, and then let them make their decision. And, and the reason why I really believe in that is because uh, studies have also shown is that even if you get girls interested, if you got girls interested in, man, in, in advanced manufacturing in elementary, then when you go from elementary to middle school, you're going to see a drop. When you go from middle school to high school, you're going to see a drop. From high school to college, you're going to see a drop. And then from college to the career, you're going to see a drop. And then in the career, you're going to see a drop. So you could start out with 100 girls that love advanced manufacturing, but then by the time you get to career, you may only have two, three, four girls there because there's so much loss throughout the way. So I think uh, studies have shown that, hey, if girls consciously make that decision on their own, there's almost a three times greater chance that they'll stick with it all the way throughout the uh, workforce pipeline. So if you go ahead and click on the next slides, um, also talks, uh, this is just another, it's a video of actually one of our events showing how the girls got hands-on, learned about 3D printing and modeling and a number of other different things and go ahead and continue to click through. Another video as well. Um, and, and, and once again, the one of the reasons why I love the videos is because it shows girls in those types of situations, in those types of opportunities. Because because if you think about it, you know, if you're trying to really get more girls into advanced manufacturing, or if you don't, if you aren't exposing girls anyway to begin with, then they can't see themselves there. And I think that's that's one of the key points is that if they can't see themselves be successful in that particular career or see themselves be hands on, and then that may that that's not going to resonate with them. So uh, go ahead and continue to click through. 
and I apologize about this. So, uh, talking about uh, this talks about NCWIT and our aspirations award. Uh, one other thing is providing recognition for girls that are interested uh, in those STEM careers, and uh, we've been very successful in using their resources to really uh, target girls and provide them an opportunity to recognize them because not only get them hands on, right? Because if you think about it, you you have to work at every step of the pipeline. So in elementary, in middle, so it's not something where you can do something in elementary and kind of, you know, pat yourself on the back and say that, hey, you know, I'm done. I'm good. I've made my impact. I've gotten more girls in, interested in advanced manufacturing. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You know, you have to, it's constant, right? It's that constant reinforcement, that constant awareness, those constant opportunities. So uh, in elementary, middle school, we do a lot of hands-on career exploration, per, uh, you know, awareness. And then in high school, we have the opportunity to actually recognize them if they're interested in those careers. And, and the reason why is that it actually provides them a um, access to a a mentor network where they can ask questions uh, to their peers all across the country. So, um, you know, having that support structure that that can, can so that they have someone that they can ask questions to bounce ideas off of. But because if there's not a lot of girls that are interested into in, in that career field, then it's hard for them to reach out and ask questions. And, and what ends up happening is that they end up changing their mind or not going into those careers. So if you go ahead and click on through and I know there's a bunch of chat, so feel free, Kathleen, Mimi, or Lisa, if there's any questions, feel free to have me stop. But um, if you could click on the next slide, and I, I keep on trying to do it on my end. <laughs> is it not going? Is it stuck? And is it? Are you not? Are you all not seeing this? Uh, we're, I, I'm still stuck on that one slide, but that's okay if if if, if we're stuck on that. Uh, one thing, if uh, Kathleen, I know I showed, if you could switch over to that last link I sent you, the link before, I don't know if you <clears throat> can really do that. Yeah, can you tell me which one, just so? Uh, 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 just the one right above um, the document one. Uh, so I, I sent it backwards. So it'll, the, it'll be the, the yeah, girls the girls' auto clinic. Auto, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you click on that. So, sure. so hang, I, on. hang on. So yep. we've got to change presenters from Mimi to me. Okay. So, so, so while we're doing that, I wanted to share with all of you advanced manufacturing, probably the one area that's probably the closest that can relate that maybe you could use as a stepping stone or maybe to introduce some events or activities. And basically it's called girls auto, auto clinic. Um, and it's, and it's an automotive industry and it's, uh, basically it's, it's a, it's a woman by the name of Patrice Banks. And uh, she was a, I believe her story starts out where she was a software developer in Silicon Valley making six figures, right? So she was doing really well. And then at some point in her career, she wanted to give back. Uh, and she was really intrigued about the automotive industry. And after she got into the automotive industry, uh, she shared she shared this fact that, um, and, and I heard her speak back in December. She, she shared this fact that I, I still I am, am like, hey, why did I not know this? But did you know the number one consumer in auto repair industry is females? Right. And and when I say number one, meaning like 85 percent of the consumers in the automotive repair industry are females. But if you think about it, when you go into an automotive repair shop, does it really cater to that audience? A hundred percent. It does not cater to that audience. And that's what she wanted to do. And she created the girls auto clinic, one, not only to cater to uh, the female population, because that's the largest consumer population of automotive repair, but she also wanted to merge and and provide an opportunity for girls or young women to find out more about getting into the auto industry and and their interests and different things like that. So actually what she she has is that she's she opened up, I think I believe on the East Coast, an auto an automotive repair shop, but it's actually a salon as well. So you can actually go in there and get your nails done, get your hair done while your car's getting fixed. So once again, you know, she's catering to that audience and all of her mechanics are females that she trains and, and she's just, just goes through a bunch of different things. So, and she has a wonderful book. I think uh, Kathleen, if you want to flip, it's, it's that first link I sent you that Amazon uh, link, but it's it, it's called Girls Auto Clinic Glove, and and that book's got a tremendous amount of resources. I think one thing, as as all of you are looking at 
you know, trying to get more of your females interested in advanced manufacturing because of uh, the, the work with Toyota and all that. Um, I, I think, you know, I was always one of those people to think that, hey, you know, you know, students these days, they don't like books, right? They want something technological, but I was actually really wrong. You'd be surprised, and especially on the female population, uh, I mean, more females read than men. I, I mean, that that's a fact, and I, and I think all of us would probably agree. So I think providing them resources that resonates with them, not necessarily a, you know, how to be a, um, you know, uh, how to go into a STEM career for dummies, you know, something like that it isn't going to motivate them to read or get interested. But I think a book like this, Girls Auto Clinic, where she goes through and shares her story, the reason why she wanted to get more females trained about, um, you know, cars and, 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 and and aware of, you know, how to change a tire, how to check your oil, different things like that. I mean, stuff that's not necessarily rocket science, but stuff that, you know, I think for 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 decades, if not hundreds of years, was thought of to be knowledge that only males needed to have, or only a, only a male can fix a flat tire or something like that. So, so she's really one of those trailblazers that I love, and uh, th this is one of the many books that we love to share uh, for when we have girls come to our events. The other thing that I didn't get a chance to talk about um, on our slides is when we have events, so I encourage all of you to have these types of events is that you always want to look at your, you know, where you're hosting it at. Uh, you know, we've hosted them at schools, uh, high schools. We've hosted them at colleges. We've had companies open their doors and, and host events there where we expose girls to these different careers and opportunity and get them hands on. And, and, and really that hands on piece is the key piece because uh, two of the things that we really want to focus on is trying to help them overcome their fear. Um, like that one stat said, uh, you know, 40 percent. 47% of the girls wouldn't feel comfortable in a class if they were the only girl. So we need to overcome that fear. And how we do that is we build their confidence on working with uh, the technology, the computer, working with their hands, you know, programming, uh, in this case with advanced manufacturing, programming those robots to make those widgets and gadgets and different things like that. So that when they do walk in their room, and, and the instructor or someone asks a question, they're the first one raising their hand because they feel confident, right? They feel comfortable, they know the information, they're not shy because they've they've actually, you know, you know, built it or, or done it or created it. So, um, uh, so the other slide I wanna, if you wanna go to, um, uh, uh, actually just, just, just leave it there. I kinda wanna, you know, it's, it's about 1.30 right now, kinda wanna see what questions uh, there are right now. Let's see, at your events, uh, I see a question. Do you give uh, girls such as a girls auto clinic club? If so, what funds are you? Okay, great question. All right. So um, at our events, so we we have a number of funding sources. So, and I will tell you the best funding source that I have found is the local community, right? To get local companies, organizations to help support our events through different uh, funding where they'll come in, uh, buy the book for all the girls or buy a toolkit or something like that. Um, I will tell you, I think on one of my sites, you know, we do have Perkins funding, Perkins non-traditional funding. Uh, our Perkins funding can go down to middle school all the way to middle school and uh, so that that's one of the funding sources as well as grants uh, there are a number of different stem grants out there where you can apply and use to help um, um, uh, to help provide this takeaway to girls because that's the other thing that that we've learned over the last three years having these events um, just to have the event I think is honestly probably not good enough uh, but it's the first step right by having this event, and I know someone's probably on unmuted, but doing something, but uh, by having the event, that's the first step, right? But then you also want that event to resonate with them after the event. So the next day, the next week, the next month. So that's why providing them a book. So this is just one of the books that we provide. Uh, there's another book by National Geographic called Women in Vision that features 40 female photographers and pictures that they've taken throughout their life. So um, you, you, you know, no matter what book you choose, you know, think of something that that they could use to that would help motivate them. That it doesn't necessarily have to be directly tied into, um, you know, STEM or IT, but it's it's something that gets them thinking, uh, gets them uh, to be think uh, uh, think like, hey, this is something I can do. Someone else has done it, or someone else is doing it. Then hey, you know, maybe I can do it as well. So. Um,
oh, can you talk about the movie events? So you, okay, great. So, uh, so we do the events where we do them at high schools where we get them hands-on activity. So something else, uh, if those of you that have um, uh, remember back when you were in elementary and middle school, I remember always going uh, to like a planetarium or seeing an educational movie. Uh, here in Southern Nevada, when my daughter went through elementary school, she never went to see an educational movie. So I was like, you know, I, I, I got to change that because, you know, I learned so much from going to see those movies. One, because I love movies. And today's generation, I mean, they love that website, YouTube, and they love watching videos and streaming and stuff like that. So what I did was I was able to bring uh, a company into town that now offers uh, educational movies. So what we have is what's called Girls in STEM uh, movie nights, but they're actually held during the day. So, so, so we'll take groups of girls to movie theaters and have them watch these movies about um, um, going into space, um, uh, building space modules or, or, or different things like that. And, and the best part about it is besides watching the movie, we also have them do a hands-on activity, which I love. It, it's actually called BEAM, but it's actually the the, the Bigelow Educational um, Activity Module. And they're using a piece of paper and they're using origami to basically create a lunar module. And a couple of things that I think this really speaks well well to is that, you know, they've just seen a movie about space, about going into space and, and, and you know, like the space station and astronauts and all that. And then we've had the conversation about, you know, hey, how do you, how, how do you take all this stuff into space? You know, what if it's really heavy? Does it need to collapse and all that? So then by them making a lunar module that actually Actually collapses to a very thin piece of paper and then they can expand it to a lunar module really starts to get them starting to think about hey you know this is something that um, uh, really I needed to be aware of if I was going to go into space and it, it just it, it just really starts starts their wheels turning as far as ideas and say hey is this something we can use uh, you, you, you know when there's a natural disaster, and I was like, yeah, that's the whole concept of in, in the whole concept of in, inflatable rafts was, you know, hey, something in a small pack like this, you pull a string, and then all of a sudden it becomes a big raft. So, um, and and it's just I, I I love the questions that that happen when you have them do the hands-on activities and stuff like that. So, um, Sinal, Vanilla yeah. asked about uh, where would you add a two-year maintenance degree in STEM? Vanilla. Tell me more about when you say a two-year maintenance degree. Can you elaborate? So I'm and, uh, sorry. I was just going to say, and and while we're giving Fenella a chance to um, put more down, Kelly also asked about what other types of hands-on activities have been successful with this population. Okay. Yeah, and and, and, so, and so can you all hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Hear you. Okay, perfect. So the um, AMT program, the Advanced Manufacturing Technician program, is a two-year, actually 21-month program that um, really doesn't fit under science or um, engineering or math. I mean, it's 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 more about um, being for lack of a better term, a robot doctor, uh -huh. maintaining the equipment in the plants. So, so my question is where I, I see a lot of your material is STEM focused. Where uh -huh. would you insert this kind of pathway in, in your program? Yeah. So uh, is currently, is it, what's the age range that you currently have it in? Maybe, maybe let me ask you that. So the so in our plant um, in Georgetown, Kentucky, we actually we actually employ anybody who's interested in the advanced manufacturing technician program. We have spent okay. over the years a significant amount of time targeting our development toward high school seniors okay. because you do have to be 18 to work in the plant. Right. Um, so uh, and and one of the reasons why we got involved with NAPE is because we do have a challenge in attracting right. uh, females of color specifically um, into these careers. Right. Right. Yeah. So 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 you you probably have it in the right place as far as high school from from what you've described you know having it junior senior level uh, probably makes the most sense for a couple of reasons one because of maturity and their skill set and knowledge to that point because thinking as far as what a two-year um two-year maintenance type program would be however it's 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 how do you get them when they get to that point of junior senior level 
how do you get them to commit to do that? And I think um, starting in in probably eighth and ninth grade, really starting to get them interested in that type of opportunity or that type of degree is the key because I think that's 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 really why what we have targeted middle school and um, to, to really kind of help build our programs in the high school and community college area because if we wait till they're in high school or a year before they can take the program, um, honestly, it's a little too late because they've already had maybe uh, uh, perceptions of what the career is. They may be thinking about something else, but I think uh, targeting them early or doing some recruitment earlier, um, you know, if you already have people going through that program or have gone through that program, you know, getting them to go and speak to an eighth grade class or a ninth grade class to try to get that recruitment. And maybe uh, one thing that we've also found successful that I haven't even mentioned is um, what I call informal learning environments. Uh, and but it's basically like those after school Saturday or summer camp programs. Right. Uh, so so is there a summer camp program where you could take that to your program and and during the summer you provide opportunities for females to find out more about it, to get a tour of the plant, this and that. I, I mean, there's a number of ways that you could help with that recruitment so that when they do get to the point of high school, freshman or sophomore, you know, maybe they've attended a Saturday workshop or uh, that, uh, that gave them more information about the program or attended a week long camp, um, you know, their sophomore year. So then when they get to their junior and senior year, they're, they're really uh, interested in and motivated to really enter in or into a program like that. Um, and I like your um, comment. Thank you for your, your comments. That is definitely helpful. And we are trying a, a number of different things, but somebody mentioned Project Lead the Way, getting girls of color interested in Project Lead the Way. I just want to caution everybody on this call, not every school district has that. Right. So right. that becomes a non-starter for right. um, many girls of color who, who just don't have that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I have to say, so I know there's been a number of questions about how, you know, how do we target not only females, but females of color. I will tell you here in Southern Nevada, you know, we are a majority minority school district. So meaning um, um, our, our majority student population is actually a minority subset. So our, our, our two highest minorities obviously is Hispanics and African American. And, and we have really uh, made a conscious effort when we plan our girls and tech events that we are including those groups. So to give you an idea, so our first uh, girls in STEM movie night, uh, we actually targeted a hundred inner city girls that were all African American, all Hispanic, and and like I said, to them when they actually got to create that origami module, right, right, it really opened. You could see their eyes light up that say, hey, wait, this this is something that I just did. I just you know I spent 15 minutes. I built this module and it collapses paper thin and then and, and it opens up to the size of an apple you know and, and it's just for them to to have that opportunity to have that experience and plus and 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 obviously if you're having these types of events you know studies have shown you got to have all female type events right all female oriented events like if you're doing a summer camp have all females there have it dedicated to all females uh, try to have all your presenters as to all females the other thing is you you, you know community engagement i've been very fortunate uh, to really get a lot of our community involved where whenever we have our events i usually always have someone from the community like an engineer or a, 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 a coder or programmer that is a female come and speak to the girls as well so once again they not only do they get hands-on they actually see someone in the field that's done it that they can ask questions um, one of my uh, favorite questions that i want to share with you um, is uh, we had a middle school girl ask a, a panel that we had um, can i wear a dress Dress to work. Okay, now think about that. You, 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 we all probably smiled a little bit, maybe even giggled a little. Bit. But, but when, when you, when you dissect that question, when, when this seventh grader is asking, "Can I wear a dress to work?" Think about her perception of wearing a dress, being female, and how that maps to her careers, right? So I think the key is, is, is and, and I love the answer that that our panelists gave to to that girl who asked that question. She said. And, and, and I think this was her exact word. She said, honey, 
it doesn't matter what you wear. If you know the stuff, they'll respect you and you'll be able to do the job. So that that was really what her answer was because it really doesn't matter if you're wearing a dress, if you wear a turban, whatever it is, um, you know, you got to know the content and right, and you have to be confident with the content. So that, that, that's kind of the, the message she was trying to convey is like, hey, continue to learn, be confident, and it's not going to matter what you wear. You know, if you can do the job, they'll hire you or someone will hire you, you know, so, but, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of challenges, not only gender, but cultural challenges try to overcome. Uh, the other thing I want to mention with um, with African American and minorities, especially Hispanic, um, not only do we work with the girls as well with our events, we also, uh, some of our events, we encourage and require the parents to come as well. So we have about an hour or so programming with the parents where we provide information to the parents about the jobs and the careers, uh, the benefit, because a lot of times, you know, you know, the, their daughters going into this career can actually bring that family out of uh, uh, out of poverty because some of these careers can lead to an eighty thousand dollar paying a job, hundred thousand dollar paying job. So to bring the families in and explain to the parents not only the benefit of these careers for their daughter, but how they can support their daughters through their career. Because I think a lot of times, you know, if you get the girls excited, if you get the girls interested about it, they don't have that support from home. You know, maybe their parents are saying, okay, well, no, you got to do this because that's how it's always been. And I was like, well, no. So so we try to overcome that with the parents and, and make the parents aware of, hey, you know what? why this is beneficial, why this is important uh, if your daughter is interested in pursuing a career, whether it's in STEM or advanced manufacturing or whatever. So, all right, I'm going to, I know there's a lot of questions. I, I don't know if Mimi or Kathleen is, if. Uh, Snow, one of the thick comments that I made, because I know there was a, a question about how do you get young girls to connect to the idea of you know, a maintenance technician sort of job. And uh -huh. I think that it's really important to get our elementary students, both girls and boys, comfortable with tinkering, uh -huh. with taking things apart, with, with given problems that don't have obvious solutions that they have to use their hands to figure out, like your origami example, but also, you know, taking computers apart and and figuring out how things work. I think that our, our girls are socialized to not do that as much as our boys are. And so really giving girls more of an opportunity to, to figure things out with their hands. In fact, I've done uh, several talks about um, the Disney character Tinkerbell. Mm -hmm. There was a movie that came out about Tinkerbell after the whole Peter Pan thing, where she, she is really a tinker and she takes things apart and puts gears together to figure out she makes this whole machine as part of the movie of Tinkerbell and and exposing our girls to what are normally you know very feminine characters that have these skill sets i think is is important as well so yeah i just wanted to make a comment about tinkering and the maker movement is really big as well yeah and let me share something as well so um you know, please keep in mind that, you know, all these ideas and stuff like that are, are not mine. You know, I do a lot of R&D, which, you know, people think of as research and development, but I, I call it rip off and duplicate uh, with credit, uh, but really to take ideas from other people and specifically taking ideas from female students that are currently in the program. OK, so even if you have one or two female students currently in the program, have them help you plan an event, have them be the speaker for the event, have them kind of come in and, and start to, uh, you know, share ideas. Hey, you know, what would be beneficial? What type of activity would a field trip here be beneficial? Everything's like that. So I want to share with you on video and I'm not sure if you can blow up my video, but this is a little booklet that's just got a three ring binder, just a bunch of pieces of paper. And it basically says code like a girl. So one of the girls that helped me plan one of our girls in some events she's like oh i i want the girls to create this booklet with the rings so she wanted to buy these rings so i so we were able to fund buying her these rings and it was basically an eight and a half sheet of paper um that she she had them cut up and make this little booklet but the first page says code like a girl guess what the second page says and i'll and i'll put it up here but if you can see it says are you crying there's no crying in computer science class <laughs> and keep in mind i did not write this you know a girl wrote this but you know she was trying to be a a little funny but she was trying to like hey let them know that hey you know there's no crime and then um you know she goes on this other one is 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 one on uh linux and it says linux is user friendly 
it's just picky who its friends are, right? So thinking about, you know, and once again, she was designing it on a female perspective. And you know what? I could not have come up with these. And and I and I love the last, the back page that she created. And uh, it says, uh, code blooded, eat, sleep, code return, right? But, but you know, she was using a play on words to get these middle school girls, and she was a high school girl at the time, uh, to get these girls interested. So she actually created this activity. So I think a lot of times we don't think about using, um, even if we just have a handful of girls already in the program or using people that are already in the field to help create those activities, to help create, hey, what's going to be that engagement piece? What's going to get them excited? What are going to be those hands-on activities? I mean, this little, when, when she first told me she, she needed a bunch of these colored rings ordered and i'm like why do you need these colored rings i was like because because in my mind the first thing i was thinking of i hope they're not going to do anything piercing wise with this or anything like that but 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 when she explained this little book i was like i love this idea i love this idea where they actually went through and they actually cut all the pages put it all together and then they went through the book and and the best part is she didn't tell them what order it was in so they had to put it in their own order and it was just a fantastic activity so i think you know using some of our own internal intellectual knowledge um and using students that are currently in the program program um, that are the, that can really come up with those ideas um, also on all of our girls in tech events uh, we try to make it as student driven as possible meaning so if, if we're inviting middle school girls we're having the high school girls run the program so I'm so I'm having the teachers literally just sit back and watch the students run the program if we're having high school girls go to the college level we're having the college students run the program right uh, the professors are just sitting back and, and watching and then if we're having the high school or college girls go to the industry you know we're letting the industry all the females in the industry run the program we're not we're not helping them uh, we do provide some coaching and mentoring on hey how best to reach students and stuff like that just so that their presentation isn't boring or anything but um, we're really letting the students kind of self-motivate themselves, you know, because then they can just relate better to the students than they can relate to someone that's a little older. So, uh, but uh, the, that, that's what we found that's been really successful. Great, Sinal. I think we're going to turn it back over to Mimi if you want to I hopefully get um, your slides back up. Yep, and, and, and I do love, I think you posted that parent engagement piece is one of the nine best practices. Uh, that's gonna be a key, especially for the students of color. Uh, we have seen a tremendous amount of impact that that makes. So definitely, um, I, I might have to join back in on that just, just to listen, because I'm always looking at more ways to, I mean, I mean even being a parent, um, I know what, what uh, interests me as far as with my daughter, but you know, for every parent and their child, it's it's different. So uh, that parent engagement uh, is is really a huge piece, especially with that support of uh, girls in in these careers. So, but yeah. And Sinal, Freda had one final question. Oh, sure. Do you have written examples of what you share with, for example, industry to work with students? Um, we, we, we do, um, uh, the, the, there's, um, obviously there's a slide deck that, that I share with some of our industry, uh, professionals. What I try to do is not necessarily share written examples, but I try to have more one-on-one face-to-face -on -one meetings. Um, I will tell you, I am old school, meaning I believe more in face-to-face -face meetings than bouncing back emails and, and stuff like that. Because I think, uh, if, if the industry is interested in really working with students, I think they will take a face-to-face -face meeting and then the face-to-face -face meeting you can share with with them the 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 written examples and how you've used it and and the only reason I do that is because you know I feel like um, the, the these conversations have to be personal because you're trying to personally connect with these girls so if they so if they can see and hear the passion that all of you have to getting more girls in the reason why you want to do it then I think those conversations tend 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 to work better as far as hey showing them hey here's some pictures of here's the impact we've made uh, this and that so I, I have one written example that I that I or actually it's it's, it's uh, uh, that, that I share with a lot of industry people. It's, we at one of our events, we had a, a business donate iPads, where we donated uh, a couple iPads to some of the girls in the classroom, and and it was completely by uh, luck of the draw where we draw it. Um, the, the, 
on a piece of note card they had to write some they had to write their name and then something uh they had to write what problem they want to solve so we collected all that information and we used that as a drawing for a raffle and then one of the girls that we drew her name was i didn't realize it at the time but uh she was uh homeless her her parents were um homeless she, she came from a single family home and she went home with so much excitement it motivated the mom to go out and try to find a home and they ended up finding a home like two weeks later so it was just it was one of those things that you know we really you know tried to you, you, you know we I, I felt like we made an impact in that family's life just by that girl being so excited that she had won something and her mom seeing that joy and because her mom wrote, wrote uh, her mom wrote a very nice letter hey thanking because if it wasn't for her daughter coming home so excited about school and what she had learned she would have never thought about going and trying again to find a home so but yeah so there's a lot of different stories that, I, that I'm sure we all have. And Sonal, um, this is Sonella. Again, I just want to echo what you said. It's really about the relationship and uh -huh. engaging industry with the schools and the teachers. We're even talking about having a teacher externship here at the plant um, this coming summer so that the teachers, counselors, um, career and, and um, college coach are aware of what we do because they become very, 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 very enthusiastic recruiters for us. Yeah, and 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 I and I didn't even get to touch up on this, but this year uh, we provided training for all of our counselors in middle school and high school, and we specifically talked about uh, females and females of color on what what the type of messaging is that those counselors actually provide, and then Nate, um, you know, has 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 that micro messaging uh, workshop that's that, that that I attended a couple of years ago, and and we still use some of the resources and stuff from that. So yeah, so touching base with the counselors is, is key as well because um, no one person in education or the corporate world is is is, is really going to make a, a huge change, but by all of us working together, we can truly make an impact in these uh, young girls' lives. So anyone have any last questions for Sanal before we wrap up? I think we had some good dialogue. And I want to just let you know that I posted in the chat box uh, a link, for example, to the NASA event that the activity, Sanal, that you were talking about. Um, okay. And now I can't remember the name of it. The, the big the, uh, the, the beam module. Yeah, the beam uh, big low educational activity module. Yeah, right. So I put the link in there so you can access that. The other thing we'll do is all of those great videos that you have on your PowerPoint. We huh? will um, beg, borrow and steal and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and load That's on right. our YouTube YouTube channel and make sure you all have access to those as part of this of this project because those are great resources to share and, and utilize in any kind of outreach event that you're doing, especially with younger students. So um, yeah. keep and, all those things in mind. Yeah, and, 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 and I did post my email and my social media handle just for those of you, if you want to reach out directly, you know, happy to share additional resources or if you just want to powwow about an upcoming event, um, I'm happy to help out as much as I can. Great. I also, right. before we close, I wanted to appeal to the people on the call that, you know, if this was useful to you as you're starting to see the, the type of information that we have in the best practices document, and um, Sanal mentioned the micro-messaging course he took a couple of years ago or the training he had, that is one of the, the courses that you have access to as part of this project. And so, um, you know, helping us to get the word out to the, the high school folks and um, other people in your area that you know, these resources are available and we would love to get them more involved. So if you can help us spread the word um, and generate some interest for people to engage with the project, we appreciate that as well. So thank you. Great. Um, I do want to remind everybody that there is a link to the evaluation for today's meeting um, in the materials tab on your control panel on the right hand, should be on the right hand side of your screen. Might be someplace different, depends on how your screen set up. Um, and are there any other instructions before we say goodbye and thank everybody for engaging? Let me remind you that our next table talk is on February 4th. We'll be talking about making it personal using invitations and outreach specifically to girls and girls of color to engage them in programming um, to inspire them for advanced manufacturing pathways. So we'll talk about that strategy specifically. 
And uh, any pr questions before we say goodbye? All right, I think we're good to go then. Thanks everyone, please, again, please um, access the evaluation and complete it before, before you get to two minutes away from this <laughs> and distracted by other things. Thanks to thank all of you. you. Thank you so much, Sanal. We appreciate your time and absolutely. Everything yeah. to thank, say. You. thank you. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hopefully it was beneficial everyone. If not, just tell them I suck. <laughs> 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 Have a good one, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.